Hey everyone! Today I want to take a step back from some of the new releases I've been looking at and take a look at an independent title that's been making a lot of noise all over the gaming community. Braid is a puzzle platformer released by Jonathan Blow and it was originally released on Xbox Live, but recently has been released on the PC and the Mac. Now you can pick this title up for only $15 on all three platforms, but should you spend your money on this cutesy independent game? Let's take a look! At its heart, Braid is a simple 2D side-scroller. The purpose of each level is to collect puzzle pieces scattered throughout it, but to collect the pieces, you're going to have to solve a ton of puzzles. Once enough puzzle pieces are collected, they may be assembled into a complete picture and you'll be granted access to the next level. There are six levels in the game, each consisting of several sub-levels. What's interesting with Braid is the levels are actually really difficult to figure out. You really have to think in creative ways to get some of those puzzle pieces, and you'll find yourself just standing there thinking a lot of the time. This is no children's game. This is a thinking man's game. Now, there are walkthroughs on the internet that could be rather helpful, but really, it kind of ruins the experience and makes the game really short. What gives you the long game length is the amount of time it's going to take you to get creative enough to solve the puzzles. That said, Braid is set up in such a way that you can quit at any time and not lose your progress, so you can play a level and come back at a later time to solve the next one. That's what made this game take so long for me to complete. The gameplay in Braid is what makes it something special. At the beginning of each level, the main character Tim is presented with a bunch of books on pedestals. When you read the books, they vaguely foreshadow the gameplay mechanic of the level you're about to enter. The mechanics are really cool too. In the beginning, you simply have the ability to rewind time. Later, you find that certain objects are not affected by time reversal, and then you discover that as you walk forward, time moves forward, and when you walk backwards, it rewinds. Later yet, you start controlling your shadow, as well as all the other time controlling mechanics from before. And then finally, you gain the ability to use a ring to significantly slow down time to everything that's placed close to it when you set it down. Braid is single player, which is just fine for this type of game, but I think it would be cool in a sequel to have multiplayer version of the game that required multiple players to solve the puzzles. Nonetheless, Braid is really, really fun to play. I like the fact that I don't have to make a major time investment to enjoy the game. It's fun from the start, and it gets exponentially more challenging as you progress. Once you complete the game for the first time, a speedrun gameplay mode becomes available for you that offers additional challenges, including beating the entire game in 45 minutes. The controls in Braid are very easy. I'm reviewing the Mac version of this game, and you really only have to use the arrow keys to move, the spacebar to jump, and the shift key to control time. That's it. Braid is a simple game concept and has simple execution, yet brilliant game design and enjoyable and engaging gameplay. Braid is an absolutely beautiful game. I was absolutely amazed when I first started playing it. I just couldn't believe an independent developer made this. The first thing I noticed were the decorative bright backgrounds that looked 3D because there were multiple layers stacked on top of each other. David Hellman, the artist of a supposedly famous webcomic that I've never heard of before, created the artwork. There's a lot of artsy fartsy things incorporated in the artwork that people who think they are deep probably think is pretty cool, but that doesn't really do anything for me. I don't want to play a game and get spiritual about it, I just want to enjoy it. Now don't get me wrong, Braid is beautiful and I loved every second of its visual smorgasbord. The soundtrack of Braid is something else that needs to be pointed out and commended. The developer decided to use long, organic, and complex licensed songs instead of having music created for the game. The songs are long enough so that the player doesn't recognize that it's being looped while they're trying to solve the really challenging puzzles. Something else I discovered while researching this game is that the songs were actually used to help create the artwork for the levels, and when you listen to it while you play, you'll feel the same. The songs are played in reverse when you rewind time, but luckily, they don't sound too terrible when you do so. Braid is a genius game with brilliant, beautiful artwork and graphics, and an immersive soundtrack, clever gameplay mechanics, and all around is just fun. The $15 price sounds a bit steep for an independent game like this, but I'm completely going to recommend it. 
Just don't ruin your experience like I did. Whatever you do, don't look for the walkthrough on the internet. The game is really short, considering a speedrun could potentially take you only 45 minutes once you know what you're doing. Braid is really something special, and I'm so upset with myself for not playing it as it was intended. I hope to see something more from Jonathan Blow in the future, and so should you.